Welcome. This is Richard Pickings at Bridgeside Software. In this tutorial, I'll illustrate some of the advanced bridge geometry capabilities in PG Super. I'll discuss how to input variable width deck bridges and splayed girder spacing, and how to define a different number of girders in each span. Then after the end, I'll show how to renumber spans and how to mix different girder types in a bridge. I'll be running our PG Super Professional product, but the Texas DOT and WashDOT versions work basically the same for this example. Our fictitious bridge has three 80-foot spans. Abutment 1 is at station 1 plus 20. The bridge width tapers with splayed girders, and there is a different number of girders in each span. All girders are Washington DOT WF58G I girders. Span 1 has five girders spaced at 8 feet. Span 2 has four girders spaced at 8 feet at Pier 2 and 6 feet at Pier 3. Span 3 has four girders spaced at 6 feet. The deck is 30 feet wide at piers 1 and 2 and is 24 and a half feet wide at piers 3 and 4. This means that the deck has constant width in spans 1 and 3. Span 2's deck is variable width with a spline taper between piers 2 and 3. The bridge is on a curved horizontal alignment defined by the point of intersection station at 5 plus 0, 0, a back tangent of nine, north 90 degrees east, a delta angle 21 degrees left, and a radius of 2,000 feet. For simplicity, the bridge lies on a flat vertical profile. This is the initial BridgeLink Professional screen when you first start the program. As you can see, there's no file loaded yet. Our first step is to configure PG Super for the Washington DOT. Go to File, Configure Bridge Link. Go to the Configure PG Super Wizard step and select WashDOT as the server, configuration server. In here, we have several options. We're going to take the wash dot configuration to skip over the next steps. Now we can create a new bridge predefined for the Washington State DOT. So we'll go to File, New, open up a PG Super Project Templates. We're going to select the WF girders. WF50G is our template bridge. You can enter project properties if you want. Let's define the roadway geometry. Select Edit Alignment. We have a back tangent of 90 degrees east. We can select that as our initial direction. Note that this has already been pre-input in the template. Add a single curve to the alignment. The point of intersection for our curve is at five plus zero zero. We have a forward tangent of 21 degrees left and a curve radius of 2,000 feet. That's our curve geometry. If you're confused about how to input alignment information, we can always go to Help. Clicking Help in a dialog brings up context-sensitive help for that dialog. In here, you can see definitions for all the input parameters. Another helpful tip, uh, when you're in, the, you can, if you're in the user guide, you can go to Introduction 
and about this guide, that topic. And it will show you sign conventions and how to input stationing, offsets, angles, and bearings in the program. Now let's lay out spans and piers. Let's right click on abutment two and select insert. And we can add an 80 foot span after abutment one. Another way to add a span is through the edit menu, edit, insert span. The insert key can also work. Now let's create another 80 foot span after abutment three. Here's our three span bridge, but our span lengths aren't correct yet. Let's go ahead and click on the direct manipulation space here and select 80 feet. Here's our 80 foot span and you can see now that it's along our curve, but not yet at the right location. So let's go ahead and move abutment one to the station of one plus 20 feet. Oops, let's... We want to move the bridge and retain all span lengths. Okay, here's our bridge laid out correctly. We can double check this by clicking on the alignment plan profile radio button at the top here. This shows stationing and location along the curve. Also note that our vertical geometry is flat for this example. Now let's go back to our bridge view. As you can see, the default spacing of six feet is what we want for span one and span three. But we need to make an adjustment in span two and change the number of girders in span three. Let's do this by editing span and span two. From here, go to the girders tab and we want to not use the same number of girders in all spans. Here we want to change the number of girders to be defined span by span. So we want four girders in span two. We also want the girder spacing to be splayed in span two. So we're going to change the girder spacing to be defined span by span. Now we can define the spacing at the head of pier two to eight feet, and then back to six feet at pier three. If we select enter, we can see now we have four splayed girders. Now we need to change the number of girders in span three. Let's go to edit. Now let's go to edit bridge layout. And from the layout tab, we can edit span three. Same dialog, but just a different way to get to it. Here in span three, we want the number of girders to be four. Go ahead and click okay. And now this is starting to look like our girder spacing layout. As you can see, we need to change our deck geometry. Let's do this by selecting the deck in the section view and double clicking. This brings us to the deck geometry and materials tab on the bridge description. Uh, you might recall that the station of pier two is two plus zero zero. And we want a left offset to the deck edge of 16 feet and 15 feet on the right side. We'll add a transition and that will be pier three 
which is located at 2 plus 80. Our deck widths here are left 12.5 and right 12. And we want a cubic spline, spline transition between the deck edges. So we'll select spline and spline here. Click OK. And there's our finished bridge definition. Obviously, our bridge is make-believe, but hopefully we've learned a few things today. So let's continue pretending and say that our bridge is just a section in a part of a larger bridge. And these are spans four, five, and six. We can renumber our spans by first going to Edit, Bridge, and to the Layout tab. We'll say the bridge starts at Pier 4 and ends at a pier, since we have more spans after the bridge. I'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see now that our bridge goes from Pier 4 to Pier 7. And if I go to Edit Span, our spans have been renumbered correctly as we wish. Now let's pretend that we have a large load on girder D here in span five. We're gonna to need to make this girder larger. I'll go ahead and go back to edit span and to span five. Go to the girders tab. And now we can say that this, this type of girder right now is used in all spans we're gonna define girders span by span. And from right here, we could define all of the spans, all of the girders in this span to be a different type, but all we want is girder D. So what we can do is click on the top of the grid and right click and click on the expand option. Then we can go to girder D and change it to a WF66G. We'll take the defaults here and click okay. And as you can see, now we have a larger girder here. Uh, let's pretend one more thing and say that we want uh, different spacing here at Pier 5 and Span 2. So I'm going to go back to Edit Span. Go to Span 5. Yes, Span 2 became Span 5. Click OK. Back to the Girders tab and modify our spacing in a similar way. We've already changed our spacing uh, to be unique at each pier, but now we want it to be unique between girders. So I'll go ahead and click expand, and I'll make a very large spacing here at pier uh, between B and C, just to make the point. And here we have our make-believe bridge uh, looking even funnier as we go along. So I think I'll end our video here. You can find more information about this video and others at pgsuper.com. This is Richard Pickings signing out and wishing you happy bridge engineering.